Hello, welcome back to another deck profile. Today we're going to be doing a post VBT05 Royal Paladin Gansalot deck profile. I'm pretty excited to show this deck just because Gansalot is one of my favorite cards in the game and I'm excited to finally have them in standard. So let's jump right into the deck profile. Our starter is going to be Barkle because we got Barkle as a starter and that's just really cool. I was kind of excited when I saw that Barkle was going to be a new starter for standard. So I'm, I'm running Barkle, 100%. Uh, next up for, we're going to start with grade fours first and work our way down. So we got Exculpate the Blaster. I'm only running it at one uh, because the main focus of the deck is to win with Gansalot and drive checks and crits for the most part. Uh, you do draw a lot of cards in this deck, so you'll eventually draw into the Exculpate, but you don't want your hand to be super cluttered with the Exculpates, and you're probably only going to use it once during the whole game anyway, so the one copy works just fine. Next up is three copies of Solitary Knight, Gansalot. Yay! So, Gansalot's skill is pretty bonkers. What it does is all your blaster blades on your van and rearguard circles get 10,000 power. Then, uh, your blaster blades in your front row become vanguard circles. Yes, that, that, that is the way I worded it. And with blaster blade skill, while he's on the van, he gets a crit. And since he's on a van, he gets a drive check. It even says in parentheses on the card, the unit on there performs drive checks. So, yeah, that's it's pretty fun. Um, he doesn't gain any power himself, so I tend to run Force 1 with this deck because Force 2 and putting it on Blaster Blade is kind of redundant because it already has the crit and we already run critical triggers in the deck, so we might as well just go for more power. So this deck's a Force 1 deck. And the last grade 3 in the deck is the one copy of Powerful Sage Byron. Yes, I am only running 5 grade 3s in this deck. So you're probably wondering why I'm not running Monarch Alfred or Alfred early because you know you can ride it over Blaster Blade, move that Blaster Blade to the soul of your center vanguard and then you can use its skill to pull the Blaster Blade back out and at the same time you're getting a gift because you're riding. All fair and cool ideas. My only issue is that if you ride any of these cards you're kind of setting yourself back a little bit just because Monarch doesn't gain the crit, he only gains the power, and you have to have a Blaster Blade in the soul for it to really work for the most part, and especially because if it's going to be the first grade 3 you ride, and then also you're, it kind of slows down the deck a little bit, not going to lie. Um, and yeah, if you, call, if you ride Monarch later and you can get a Blaster Blade back, that's cool, but you really don't want to be on anything else other than Gansalot basically. You're trying to win the game by creating your opponent as soon as possible. Uh, and the Byron is because uh, you don't want to ride it, but it lets you draw cards and it's a powerful rear guard. And I just want more grade 3s just in case I have to ride a grade 3 for ride consistency. So Byron's skill is Vanner rear guard circle. When you call a unit, uh, when you're the unit is rear guard is placed, he gets 3k. So if you call two things, he gets plus 6k. Put an 8k booster behind him, he's a really big 27k beater, even with the plus 3 is 24. That's without force markers, so he's just a big beat stick. His other school's skill is also really cool. It's uh, rear guard once per turn. If your damage is more than your opponent's, you soul blast one, discard a card, and then you draw two. So drawing even more cards uh, just to see pieces that you might need, and you can discard cards like, you know what, I probably don't need this specific maybe grade 2 or grade 1 in my hand right now discard it, draw two. Cool, more shield, or hey, that's the exculpate I needed for next turn. You never know. Um, or draw onto Tristan, and then boom, you found Blaster Blade again. You know, cir circumstances like that. So I think Byron's a pretty good card. He works pretty well, but the main focus, of course, is to ride the Gansalot. Uh, I don't really have much of a ride consistency issue, and if I do have to G-Assist, it's perfectly fine because you draw so many cards in this deck that you'll make up for it eventually. Next up, we're going to grade twos. Four copies of Blaster Blade because the deck functions completely around this card. Uh, Vanguard Circle, if you have four or more rear guards, he gets a crit. So if you have four uh, other rear guards while this is on your front row and you're on Gansalot, he gets a critical uh, on top of him getting the drive check, drive check, which is cool. 
How this goes when he's placed on van or rear, counter blast, soul blast, choose an opponent's rigor in the front row and retire it. Comes in handy every now and then, but for the most part you don't really use that skill that much. Next up for grade twos, I am gonna keep running the Bedivere and K lineups. We're running four copies of Knight of Loyalty Bedivere. Bedivere is when it's placed from your hand, you can call up to 1K. If you do draw, and during the battle it's boosted by K, it gets 3K. So they boost each other, they give each other 3K, so it's plus six to the column. K's skill searches out Bedivere. So deck thinning out your deck for, you know, key cards and making a pretty decent column. On top of it being a Force 1 focus deck, this is a 34k column if it's on a Force marker. So that's a pretty big number b before even getting the triggers, so pretty dope. Bet of yours pretty good. Uh, I'm only going to be running one copy of Gordon, and the reason I'm only one running one copy of Gordon is because I decided to run two copies of Great Sage Baron. They kind of do the same thing for the most part, except Gordon is Blaster Blade specific and Baron just gives 5k to anything. So Gordon's skill is during your turn, all your Blaster Blades on your van or rear get 5k. And then if your Blaster Blade is in the same column, this gets boost. So this gives it five and boosts it. So it's a plus 15 to that Blaster Blade on top of the 10k from Ganslot, making it a 35k column. That's great, but you're usually only gonna have the one Blaster Blade column if you have a second one, I really don't feel like you need the second Gordon. Your field kind of gets too clunked up with grade twos at that point. Um, but what I like about Baron, uh, Baron's skill is when your other unit attacks once per turn, uh, you can have that unit get 5k. So it doesn't matter where Baron is, it doesn't have to attack itself. It's just when another unit attacks, van or rear, uh, that unit gains 5k. So you can put uh, Baron in the back row and have something else in the front row, when it attacks, you can use this Baron skill to give it 5k. So I like that you can give anything 5k, it can be your van, it can be your Gancelot if you need it, it can be your other rearguard column that's not the Blaster Blade column. I think it's that's pretty dope, so I kind of feel like this makes up for it. Uh, Baron's continuing skill is if the unit that you give 5k to is a grade 3 or greater, you can counter blast 1, retire this, and it gets a crit. So we are running the one copy of Byron, uh, and we also have, you know, rear guard gant slots, maybe for whatever reason we need to call to push for game. Um, we can use this skill to counter blast and give it a crit, just to put more pressure. So this deck is very crit pressure focused, and I feel like Byron does help with that synergy, and they all kind of do the same thing. And they're all search targets for Conjure of Mithril, which is the card I'll get into next. So we're running two copies of Conjure of Mithril. So Conjure of Mithril's skill is when it's placed from hand, you counter blast one, soul blast one, search your deck for a grade two, call to rear, shuffle. So your targets are Blaster Blade, Gordon, Baron, uh, Loading Angel maybe, uh, we'll get into Loading Angel in a second, and it just searches out your targets. Uh, I don't want to run too many copies, just because, you know, I mean I could run more of a Conjure of Mithril, uh, drop maybe Loading Angel down and put another Gordon and another Conjure. But you do use Counter Blast a bit in this deck, and you don't want to kind of use them all up, and then Conjure is kind of a dead card. And you also only use Conjure maybe once or twice throughout the game because you're mostly searching out Blaster Blade, and you don't really need to search out the other targets because you just end up drawing them anyways. But Conjure there is there really just like, oh, I need this one specific grade two. Boom, got it. So really good, good card in there. And last but not least, MVP. Loading Angel. Loading Angel is a really, really fun Royal Paladin card. So what it does is at the end of your turn, if you have five or more units, counter blast one, put this as soul, draw two cards. So it doesn't say five or more rear guards, it just says units. So if you have your van and your four rear guards, um, you can use this skill. And since Blast Blade only, you know, it just requires you to have four other rear guards, basically a full board, um, you're good to get that crit off and you need that one extra unit just for the crit, boom, pop down Loading Angel, swing with that crit. At the end of the turn, you move this to Counter Blast, move this to Soul, draw two cards. So you're making up for that, throwing down the hand for the crit, and you even get a, you get an extra card out of it. So why not? Um, it doesn't matter where you throw down Loading Angel, you can put it behind your Vanguard if you want. Uh, it's searchable with Conjure and Mithril, if you really are just like, hey, I need that, I need one extra rear guard, boom, Conjure, Conjure skill, call it Loading Angel, easy. Um, it's just a really fun card, and it's helping you 
draw through the deck and find your pieces. And you can use it early game if you're going to use Ride Blast Blade, get its crit early, draw, move to soul, draw two cards, maybe you'll draw into the Gans slot. You never know. But Loading Angel is definitely, definitely a really, really cool card. So that's it for the grade twos. On to the grade ones. I'm running four copies of Knight of the Harp Tristan. Tristan's pretty staple in this deck for the most part. It's when it's placed, if your van's grade three or greater, Cannonball Swan, search for a Blaster Blade, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck. Super easy. You just search for Blaster Blade. It's four Gantz slot. You have Blaster Blade in hand ready for Exculpate, so you don't have to worry about it being in your soul. It makes life ten times easier. This card needs to be run at four. Next up, uh, because I'm running four Bedivere, I am running four K. K skill is when it's placed from hand, you can blast one, search for Bedivere, call it to rear, uh, shuffle your deck. And then when it boosts Bedivere, it gets 3K. So like I said earlier, they give each other, the column gets 6K because they give each other 3K. And they just have really good synergy together and it helps fill the board and thins out your deck for triggers. So next I'm running three copies of Marin. I chose to run Marin instead of uh, Allen because Marin has a little bit better synergy with this deck because uh, Gancelot doesn't have a skill that you're using every single turn. Kind of like how King and Knights, Alfred and Monarch Alfred, you either had to ride Monarch over and over, use its kind of blast, or you're using uh, King and Knights Alfred's kind of blast every turn. So since it's not really happening for the most part, you do have a lot of like times when you don't have a card in your hand that counter blasts. So if, let's say, one one turn earlier in the game, you called Marin, you called something in front of it, kind of blast, do its skill. So its skill is, uh, when your other rear guard is placed in the same column as it, you kind of blast one, draw a card, this gets 3k. So let's say you do that early game, you call something, you kind of blast one, give this 3k, draw a card, cool. Your opponent's turn, your front row thing dies, blah, 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 now it's your turn again. You don't have maybe you don't have anything that needs to counter blast. Maybe you already have the blast blade in hand. You don't have a Tristan. You don't have a K. You don't have Conjurer. You don't have anything that's going to really counter blast. Um, you can just call whatever the card's going to be in this column. Counter blast. Keep drawing. So this has a lot more synergy because you're not really forced to use a counter blast every turn like with King and Knights Alfred and other cards. So I feel like it's way better than Allen because Allen's just a vanilla after you use its skill. Lastly, I'm only running one copy of Plug Enchanter. Uh, Plug Enchanter, I really honestly thought I was going to be running more copies of this card later. You know, because it's a it's a counter charge. It's the thing that everyone needed for um, Royal Paladin. I mean, it's like, we just need one card that counter charges and we're good. And we got it. And it synergy, has synergy with Blaster Blade, which is what most standard Royal decks are. But the main issue is that it's soul charges. That's that's why I'm only running it at one. And it's not and it, the counter charge only works if you have no face up cards in your damage zone, that's fine. But um, the soul charge will still proc even if you don't have the face up even if you have a face up card in damage and you're drawing so many cards, you're triple driving every turn. So that soul charge is gonna make a difference because um, you know like you're gonna run out of deck really, really quick. So I decided to only keep it at one, and if the card stays on the board during your next turn, you can still counter charge again the next turn and keep using the same card skill. Uh, even if you're playing against a control deck and it dies, it's fine. You you got the one counter charge for the most part, that's all you needed. Um, there's a promo that I wish we had. It's um, like Cloud Knight Grimoris or something. Uh, it's the card that is when it's placed, you can pick a grade two from your drop on the bottom or top of your deck, and if you do, it gets 10k. So that's that would so I'd probably trade out Marin for that card uh, if we ever get it. I don't think we have it, but correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure we don't have that card um, because I do want to have the ability to recycle my blaster blades, and since um, you know I do have the searchers and I do have cards that draw stuff putting it back on the bottom of the deck and then searching it back out would be really helpful and it gets 10k so it fixes numbers it you can put it anywhere and make some column makes the columns bigger and it's just on place it doesn't really have a cost so you just pick pick the blaster blades and drop put them back on the deck and you're good but since we don't have that promo as far as I know um, I'm just sticking with Marin for now
Um, triggers. Triggers are super simple. We're running eight crits. So I chose to run four copies of Lou, uh, one of my super shiny Flogel, and then I got one foiled Eponym, and the rest are common. So eight crits. Next up is four draw PGs, because, you know, they draw PGs. You could run um, grade one uh, PGs if you want to drop the Marins down to, you know, and you can run one draw PG and three grade one PGs. Like the new one, that's when you ride it. You can draw a card, then discard, just to make the excuse me, just to make the deck more aggro with more crits. But draw triggers are always helpful because damaging a draw trigger and then getting more hand during your opponent's turn is just a really great feeling all the time. Um, and drawing into more cards during your drive checks just for more defense and finding combo pieces is really important since you're only running the five grade threes and the four gant slots which you want to ride. So the draw triggers will help you get to see stuff like that faster. And lastly is just the the four heals. Yeah, let me get those real quick. There we go. Four heal triggers. So that's it for the main deck. Um, I do have force two markers uh, just in case, but for the most part this is a force one deck, which I'm kind of sad about just because these, these look really dope as markers. But um, this deck is primarily a Force 1 deck. Um, I can't think offhand of a time when you would want to go into Force 2 just because the the power that you get from Force 1 putting on your van and you're already getting triggers nonstop from uh, triple driving all the time, like, I, you want to do that more often. And if you put the crit, extra crits on the Blaster Blade that's getting all that power, that, yeah, it's like if you boost it with Gordon, it's 35. The, with three crit and um, twin drive and a drive track, sorry, um, but I feel like the forty five would just make a better difference, just because you know how uh, force has a a slight weird matchup against protect deck, so you want to have that power to help you keep up with the hand size and the numbers that it's basically just OTT <laughs> that they produce. That's basically it for the deck profile. Uh, I'm actually surprised with how well it consistently works just because of the, the, the grade, tool, grade 2 toolboxing and searching out Blaster Blade you got with its consistency. And Ganslot's just a really cool card. Triple Driving in Standard is cool, right? Um, yeah, that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed the deck. Uh, any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comments section below. And that'll about do it. I'm Richard, and I'll see you all in the next video.